Hi everybody, welcome back to Armour Forger and in this video I wanted to talk about supplies um, and how they affect the conflict mode and how they drive the conflict mode forward. Now you don't need to know this in order to play conflict, you can spawn in and you can go to the front line with your squad mates and, and shoot the enemies and move forward but if you know about supplies it means that you can do other things. Look at that NPC over there, he's reading his map. Oh I love this game. Um, you can help to drive the whole team forward in a different way. Okay, so en enough of me waffling on. So let's let's jump into the map and kind of kind of just go over again what conflict's all about. So the idea with conflict is that you'll start off at a main operating base. In this case, it was Utah, and the idea is that you've got to capture points and work your way towards the enemy, um, and eventually you will capture their um, main operating base too. And if you get a majority of the um, important points on the map, a timer starts and you can win then. So in essence, it's moving from where you are towards the enemy. That's what you've got to do. Now, obviously, you could just jump in a vehicle and you could just drive there, couldn't you, with, with your squad mates and try and take the enemy's um, main operating base wherever it might be, probably somewhere, somewhere around here. However... You can only respawn at points that you've captured. So if we look at this early game, what we can see is I have ca I've got my main operating base here at Utah, and then we've got Virginia and we've got Iowa. And as we've captured these points by having more of my soldiers on the point than the Russians have, we capture the point, we kill all the enemies. And then what we do is we build a radio tower. And that radio tower then joins Utah to Virginia. And then we build another tower and that joins Iowa. And as you can see, is as we capture these points, you get these lines, which means you can then capture these other points as well. So we can make our way across the map. But your radio range is only a certain length. So this stops you from hopscotch you know down just driving down the whole map to, to capture the enemy base you have to do it in stages you have to hopscotch along doing it like this however when you move from base to base they'll have different facilities there so if you hold my if you see me hold my mouse over utah you can see it's got certain facilities there like fuel helicopter um, there's uh, vehicles um, there's a hq and i think there's a barracks there as well um, at um, Virginia, there's the HQ, a barracks, the transmitter, and at Iowa, we've got a helicopter fuel, we've got the HQ, we've got a small vehicle um, depot, and we've got a big vehicle depot. And the reason why you want to do this is that once you've captured a base um, and you've got supplies at that base, players can then spawn there. So you can imagine if you had to spawn here up at Utah all of the time in order to get down to the south of the map. It would be boring, wouldn't it? Because you'd have all this travelling to do. However, as we capture these bases and make our way south, we can capture these, we can add supplies to these bases, and this will then mean we can then spawn at these bases. Also, if we transport supplies to them, we can then, as I say, build these extra places. So what we'll do, let's have a look round... For example, where I am now, which is, I'm at Virginia. So if we have a look around Virginia, so this is the HQ that would have been there when we captured it. Um, and the beauty is, once you've captured a HQ, it will have some supplies, and generally, also, it will start generating supplies. You see how the supplies are going up there slightly? Not very, not very fast. Um, the main supply points, especially your base, your main operating base, re regenerate supplies faster. So once we've got this and we've captured it, the first thing you do is you run in here and you, you press F and you can start building. As you can see, we have a limited number of supplies. And the first thing you would build is a radio relay station that we've built there. And that then joins this up with our operating base and also enables us to then take on the next um, place. And it allows people to spawn here. So we do that. Then, as you can see here, I've spawned in some living quarters. Now, if you spawn in some living quarters, well, you, you 
you put the blueprint down to enable you to then build them and I'll show that in a sec that means you can then call in friendly AI to defend this area with enough supplies and it also means that when um, proper players spawn in at this area um, it will cost less supplies to do so if a if a place you've captured runs out of supplies people can't spawn there anymore and then as you can see here we've got the armaments depot which allows people to um, go and change their loadouts um, and that's it sort of here so let's go let's come out of here and what we're going to do now is let's build something useful so let's build a uh, well, a light vehicle maintenance point so if we build one of these what will that mean that will then mean that people will be able to call in say jeeps that sort of thing um, or maybe even you know and uh, repair vehicles as well and um, we right, okay, looks like we've got some sort of firefight going on at the moment <laughs> so we put down the blueprint there and I could um, move it around point it in different directions etc that sort of thing and then what you then do and this doesn't have to be me, it could be someone else in the team. You run out, and on PC you press 0 to get your spade out. And you'll see the blueprint appear there. Now I've got a special mod that's on the server, which allows me to build a little bit faster. And you just run around till you see the point where it says build it. There we go. Alpha main to all stations. Light vehicles are now available from the depot at Point Virginia. Out. There we go. So now we've got this area now. So now we can request a vehicle. So we could request a vehicle, and basically it's hammers. So we could spawn in the little jeep with the machine gun. We can spawn that in there. And if it was the large vehicle depot, we could spawn in things like the trucks. And if you're the Russians, you could get like the BMPs. I mean, hopefully the um, uh, Americans will get some sort of official uh, armor fairly soon. So you can see now that by having supplies here we can then build all these useful things so that when players spawn in at virginia they can then go right let's get a jeep out or you know let's get a um let's change our loadouts or you know let's get a truck or all this sort of stuff so they can then push on to the other areas now unfortunately the rate at which your little local sort of uh, hq generates supplies is quite slow so you're going to have to move supplies around in a different way. So what we can do now is if we go back to Utah. Um, uh, oops, wrong button. Let's come out of there. Game Master. Go back to our main base. Uh, and then let's transport my player here. So we're back at the main, our main operating base here now. So we've got a few things here. So when you first spawn in here, basically they'll just be the command post. And if we go over here and we look at the supplies that are here, it's already back up to 600 supplies. Um, and what I've so what I've built here is over there we have a, a large vehicle depot. So we can spawn in a large vehicle, and I've got a truck that I've moved over here. And then we've got a barracks. So I should be able to around here um, see if we can add some personnel so let's add an infantry team and let's add a medical team and when when you add personnel like this these guys will be set to defend this particular area so obviously if you've spawned in some AI because there's enough supplies you don't have to worry about it being def you know defending it as much from the enemy when they attack but obviously they are AI you know they're, they're not brilliant so let's go back to player's character. So what we could now do is we can transport supplies. As long as the vehicle is close enough to the to the supply thing, we can now load the truck with supplies. Like so. And then we could drive that truck to, say, Virginia or to Iowa and unload the supplies there so that we could then build more stuff at these particular uh, uh, capture points. So you can imagine, you know, if you had enough sort of supplies to build, you could build like a helicopter pad. 
so that you could spawn in with a helicopter or, or all sorts of stuff. Vehicles are generally a good idea. You know, vehicles with machine guns are always nice things to, to spawn in. Similarly, you could use a small jeep to c carry supplies. You can see them up there. Or, as you can see here, if we want to sort of transfer some supplies nice and quickly, we've got a helicopter pad that I've built. And if we come over here, we should be able to see load supplies. There we go, and that is now full. And if we run over, quickly run back over here, we should see that if we look in here, see, there's only 140, 150, so it started to regenerate supplies. So the rate at which supplies are regenerated at command posts, at headquarters, limits the, the, the rate of expansion that you and your team can do. But what's very, very important is that if these um, capture points that we've captured run out of supplies, at that point people can't spawn there anymore. And so that's why you do need sort of the trucks and the helicopters and the jeeps going backwards and forwards with supplies, resupplying these points so that at least people can um, spawn there. And that's the other reason why you should build barracks there um, living quarters so that the cost of respawning players can be a lot less because you want your average player when they spawn in to go oh I can spawn in you know maybe you've, you've captured somewhere down here or I can spawn in here and be you know be in the action very very quickly rather than all these places having run out of supplies meaning they've got to spawn way back somewhere try and find a vehicle and then get lost on their way to the front so there we go so supplies in um conflict in armor forger hopefully this has been useful hopefully this kind of shows you how important it is to keep those supplies flowing from the rear echelon areas to the front line um and also when you are um going through things like the armory and choosing stuff you know don't waste supplies <laughs> either that's the other thing you don't want to do i guess a final point i should really mention as well is that what you can build in um, reforger is dependent on your rank so you may find that when you for example you capture um, a command post and you go to build something you're not allowed to build the barrack because you're not high enough rank yet um, and unfortunately that's just, just the way it is. you've just got to keep doing tasks so killing enemies capturing points um, driving supplies around so maybe just go and get a truck and move some supplies from a rear area to a forward area get that rank up and it encourages you to do those sort of tasks so that you can then do some of the more um, advanced things and call in some of the more advanced resources okay so there we go in reforger it's not just all about being on the front line and shooting the enemies. It's about being in the rear areas, moving those supplies forward so that the operating bases can keep spawning people in, keep spawning equipment in, and keep having gear for everybody else to use. All right, okay, so hopefully this has been useful. If it has been, hit like if you want to see more of the same, press subscribe, and I will, of course, see you again soon.